Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly favored. Because what you confess is what you possess. Amen? How many of y'all know we're in the last days? Again, if you don't know it, you know it now. Amen? <laughs> last days, last hours, who knows? It could be the last seconds. All of a sudden, boom, you're before the Lord. Then what? The word says be ready in season and out. <laughs> to be ready in season and out. Amen? You know, Jesus said something very powerful, and I love it. Because, you know, Jesus is a man of war. Amen? He's a man of war. He is the warrior. He's known as the Lord of hosts, which means Lord of the army. And this is a military operation, not some religious foolish operation. This is a manual. Amen? And we, we've got to come out. We've got to erase the word religion. Because Jesus never came to bring religion. Only the devil did. Amen. Jesus brought relationship. He paid the price for me and you to be connected. Everyone say, I'm connected. Amen. But the devil comes to disconnect. And that's his job and he does it well. Why? Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's disconnect. Amen? And, and in this area, there's a place where, you know, we talked about embracing, embracing. And there's, there, there's three things that are, are associated with embracing. And he says, seek me with all of your heart and all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your strength. When any one of those is broken, there is a disconnect. It's the same thing he says, there's something I require of you, and that is to abide. He says, I want you to abide in my word. Amen. My word, my presence, my prayer and fellowship in praise, in worship. So in every one of these things, you and I are to not only abide in his presence by praise and worship, abide in fellowship with him in prayer and his word, but also abide in assembling a fellowship. When any one of those are broken, there becomes a disconnect. And people don't get it. Because God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And in that word, knowledge, it means understanding. Because without understanding, look, you can have all the truth you want and not understand it. Then it's not revelation. Amen? So these are things. Why? Because everything is associated with embracing. He says, embrace me. If you hold on to me, I'll hold on to you. You let go of me, I let go of you. So in this embrace, that's what he's talking about. These are three things that we must never allow to break. Any one of those are broke, there's a disconnect. Did you ever notice that when a, 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 a tire comes off or something's messed up on a, on a vehicle, what happens, man? It doesn't turn so well. It makes it difficult. In fact, it can go in circles. And that's how people recycle and do the same old thing again. That's a sure sign of disconnect. When you begin to build on the things that God delivered you from, you're disconnected because you're going right back into the cycle. Is everybody okay? So one of the things the Lord is trying to do right now, because an established heart will not get disconnected. Does everybody say that? An established heart will not get disconnected. So it's our purpose then to make sure our heart stays established. Amen? Ezekiel 36. These guys thought they were so religious. They, they, in fact, he told them, he said, look, at your father, <laughs> your father's of the devil. <laughs> They're going, oh, my father. No, your father's of the devil. Because they were prideful and arrogant. In fact, Jesus told me, he said, you search the scriptures thinking you have eternal life when you won't even come to me and get it. <laughs> Everyone that wrote up everything by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that was written all about Jesus. And these men read it. They decreed it. They spoke it. They did all the rituals. And he showed up. 
And they didn't even recognize him. Because they were so bound by religion. A few did. Amen. Even Nicodemus, but he had to sneak out and see Jesus at night because he didn't want to get thrown out of the club, the Sanhedrin club. He wouldn't have access to the pool and all the, you know, the pleasures. <laughs> In fact, he might have just called it the Clinton Club, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> the Luciferian contract. Still trying to destroy this country. But I'm telling you, God's going to rise and the people are going to stand up and things are going to change. Because we are getting into a place where the blessings are going to be poured out. Plenty. But it's going to be a short plenty. It'll be short than famine. But we'll stand. We're going to stand. Why? Because we're going to be able to help feed, clothe, shelter. We're going to be there as the light. Amen? In Ezekiel 36, is everybody there? In verse 22. Would you speak this with me, please? Established heart. Therefore, say to the house of Israel. How many of you know when God speaks to the house of Israel, is also speaking to the body of Christ? Amen. Amen. Thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have what? Profane. Profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. When I am what? Hallowed. That means feared, reverenced, honored, and respected in me and you. Amen? When I am hallowed in you before their eyes. In other words, there is no compromise. This heart is established that he is king of kings, lord of lords. He's my dad. He's my hope, my strength, and my life. And only in he and only in him am I fulfilled. Everything else is a lie. Hallelujah. In verse 24, let's speak it. For I'll take you from among the nations. You know, everyone in this room is from another nation. Every one of us, our ancestors came from somewhere else. I mean, you got to remember, how old is this country? A couple hundred years? Something like that. That's all, you know, it's not that old. It was established by God as a brother and sister to Israel. This country, you and I have been sent into this country so that we can reach the world. But people are getting caught up in the pleasures They've been taken out and all the technology and all the things that this country offers. But our calling is to reach the world. That's why God has allowed things to happen in the technology. But the enemy has taken it and used it for self-pleasures and deception to blind people. To bring bondage of the mind. What a great honor it is to live in this country. It is an honor. God brought us here. People paid the price to get to this country. Because it was a place of worship. They knew it was a place where we could worship the true king of kings. It was established by the presence of God here. This country was blessed by God. It's still blessed by God. But God has been lifting some of his favor. Because the rulers of this country have become wicked. And it's caused a lot of problems. And now they're, they're approving things that are displeasing to God. Remember, I share with you that there's a cloud of glory and a cloud of judgment all together. Because judgment is in the house of God now. People are being exposed left and right. You know, you can only hide so long and fake it so long. But God exposes everything. Everything. Nothing's hidden. And he says, I will take you from all the, among the nations, gather you out of the, all the countries, and bring you into your own land. This is your land now. This is a place of milk and honey. Not and honey. Amen? Then I will what? Sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. And I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your what? Idols. 
idols, things that are between you and God. Anything that's unclean is an idol. I will give you a new heart, and I'll put a new spirit within you. And I'll take the heart of stone, which means heart of rebellion, out of your flesh. I'll take the heart of rebellion out of your flesh and give you a heart of God. Everybody got it? A heart that's after God. That's called the heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and cause you to walk in my what? Statutes. And you will keep my judgments in what? Do them. In other words, the Holy Spirit, he's going to put his spirit in us that is going to guide us by truth and conviction. Why? Because conviction, judgment, amen? It actually goes conviction, chastisement, judgment, and wrath. Does everybody got it? Conviction, chastisement, judgment, then wrath. So if you reject the conviction, chastising comes. If you reject the chastisement, judgment comes. If you reject the judgment, the wrath comes. And you don't, nobody escapes the wrath of God. Hallelujah. He says, and then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be what? My people. Does everybody see all that all was required to be called his people? And then you will be my people. And I will be your God. And I will deliver you from all your what? Uncleanness. Why? Because uncleanness contaminates. It contaminates the spirit. See, your heart is the character of your spirit. I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine on you. This is what's getting ready to happen. Watch. He says, and I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Why? Well, everybody else is seeking to be fed. We will have plenty. Why? Because we are of the lineage of Joseph. Amen? It, history repeats itself. In that arena, Joseph was, a, it was a time of seven years of plenty and seven years of famine, just like tribulation. Does everybody get this? We are entering, we have entered already in that time of plenty. I don't know how long it will be, but it's not going to be like seven years. I don't know if we have seven years left. The way things are going. We may only have a few years left. Who knows? God knows the day and time, but we can tell by the times and seasons, can't we? We know the next event is called the Feast of Trumpets. What we're looking for is a seven-year treaty to be signed. Once that's signed, three and a half years later, boom, we're out of here. Or sooner. Could be signed already and we don't even know it. <laughs> Oh, praise God. It says in verse 31, then you're going to remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good and you will loaf yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. Not for your sake do I do this, says the Lord. Let it be known to you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Does everybody get it? The heart of rebellion for an exchange for the heart of submission known as a heart that pleases God. Again, the Spirit will guide us by truth and conviction to position us. Why? He wants to make us a sign and wonder to the world. Amen? He wants us to be in a place where our heart is steadfast and it's an established heart that will not be moved no matter what you go through. It doesn't matter. You would rather die than go back. Jesus gave us a formula. He said, what? Deny yourself. That means you must die to yourself. Amen? And that's daily. Paul said, I die daily. Why? We don't want to profane the name of the Lord. Because, look at 
If we're, doing, if we're coming out and doing all of this stuff and we're touching on clean things, we are a false witness. Amen. It's considered a false witness. James chapter 5. He won't relent until he has it all. <laughs> James chapter 5 and verse 7. It says, therefore be what? Patient. patient. The word patient also means to be able to endure. How many of y'all know when you're waiting, you got to endure? Amen. <laughs> Amen? But the enemy loves to come and push. He's a pusher. The Holy Spirit's a leader. He leads us. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Speak it with me. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the earlier and latter rain. Do you understand that that's what's getting ready to happen? The early and the latter rain. That's end time prophecy. That's associated with abundance. It's associated with God's presence and his glory, which is getting ready to be poured out in a mighty way. And you're either under the cloud of glory or the under the cloud of judgment, one or the other. You also be patient. Establish what? Your what? Heart. Your hearts for the coming of the Lord is what? And so that you are having an established heart. So you are not moved. You are not swayed. Why? Because the influence is tremendous. It's tremendous. Verse 9. Do not what? Grumble, Grumble against one another. Brother, unless you become condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with one another, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, lest you fall into what? Judgment. If anyone among you suffers, let him pray. If anyone is cheerful, let him sing psalms. We should all be cheerful. There's nothing worse than a miserable Christian. Amen? Amen. Established heart is one that is not moved by the influences of need, want, lust, or fear. I'm going to say that again. You are not moved by the influences of need, want, lust, or fear. But you are steadfast. It's a heart that's attached to Christ to the fullness of his purpose and will. You don't want to do anything else but fulfill his will and his purpose. Does everybody get this? And fulfilling his will and his purpose, there's an area where we begin to walk in this and things become, as you're staying attached and connected, he begins to attach things. Not emotional attachments, but he begins to bring things across our path. And you will be able to discern whether those things are of God or not. Because if it tries to bring any sway whatsoever, you say no. 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 I would rather die than go back. Amen? What's he trying to do? He's positioning us for the early and latter rain. This is getting ready to happen. In fact, it's already trickling now. It's been going on. Little bit by little bit, but it's going to increase. And the whole thing is, is one day it may overtake us. Just like the flood that overtook in the days of Noah. 
Remember, the word says that as is the days of Noah, so shall be the end. As the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall be the end. Well, there's two prophetic meanings in that because for the wicked, it's going to be overtaken <laughs> badly. But for the righteous, we will be overtaken with glory. 2 Corinthians 4. Established heart. In verse 7, in verse 7, there's that song that we sing, it's called, I Will Not Be Moved. In verse 7, would you read it with me? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Does everybody see that? So I want you to understand that one of the influences that the enemy really wants to influence and pressure you on is so that you stop the yield of the Spirit and you begin to rely on you. Then you've no longer walked in, in the arena where the power is of God. It becomes the power of self. Or you're relying on you, your talents, and your abilities. It says this, verse 8, look at, here's the confirmation. We are what? Hard-pressed hard on every side, yet not crushed. In other words, we're hard-pressed with influence of the unseen realm. It's always trying, look at, the enemy's always trying to get you to rely on you. That's where we must come to the end of ourselves. Jesus gave us the formula. Deny yourself. You die daily. And let me tell you, that cannot start without prayer. You must die in prayer. Jesus had to die in prayer before he went to the cross. Amen? Amen. You die daily. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in what? Despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Remember, there's something he powerful he said. He says, if you're trying to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you're willing to lose your life, you will save it. For we who live are always delivered to what? Death. For who? Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your what? sakes that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore we do not what? Lose heart. We don't what? Lose heart. In other words, because our heart is established. We must make, get an established heart. Therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, hello, no, you're not the only one that goes through it. You're not the only one that's made a mistake. The whole thing is getting in position and turn away from what causes stumbling. Amen? Turn away. Depart from evil. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we don't look at the things which are what? Seen. seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. eternal. Again, we are hard-pressed, influenced. That drives us from yielding to the Spirit and trusting in ourself. That's the forces of evil, trying to always drive out they're trying to drive out the yielding to the Spirit and drive in their presence. So they're trying to drive out the presence of God and drive in the presence of evil. 
Does everybody get this? In Jeremiah 17. So if the enemy can get us from the arena of no longer allow yielding to the spirit and yielding to the power of God, but yielding more to our own strength, something begins to happen. The enemy's beginning to drive out the presence of God and drive in his presence, and we actually become cursed. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, curses the man who trusts in man. Does everybody see it? Curse is the man who trusts in me. In other, in other words, you're still relying on you, not God anymore. It makes his flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. Look at how it started. He trusted in himself, his own strengths and abilities and talents, and his heart departed. Why? Because the heart no longer maintained, established. There was a disconnect there was a disconnect. One of the three arenas of disconnect. And he shall be like a shrub in the desert. He shall be dry. Even when he worships, he cannot get filled. No matter what he does, he cannot get filled. And shall not see when good comes because he's blinded again. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and the salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Whose hope is the Lord and shall be like a tree planted by the waters. That's a person that can be filled. Does everybody get it? See, you can do all the praising and worshiping, all the dancing, but you can't get filled. Until you depart from touching those things that are not approved by God. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not what? Fear. When he comes, when trouble comes, you won't fear. Why? Because you're not trusting in you. You're not fighting for your life no more. You're dead. You can't kill something that's already dead. Can it will not fear when he comes, when trouble comes. It will not, and its leaf will not will be green. It won't, it won't wither and dry up. And you won't be anxious. In the year of drought, why? Because you'll have plenty. You won't be anxious. You won't be pushed. Fear is anxiety. It's anxiousness. Nor will cease from yielding fruit, good fruit, fruits of righteousness. Verse 9, read it with me. The heart is what? Deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind and the thoughts. Even to give every man according to his ways. According to the fruits of his doings. Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4. Verse 23. Established heart. We need to examine ourselves on a daily basis. In fact, almost every decision, everything we do, we need to examine ourselves. Am I still connected? Is my heart still established? Or has there been a disconnect some way? Verse 23, what does it say? Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you. And make yourselves carved images in the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When you beget children and grandchildren, they have grown old in the land and act corruptly and make carved image in the form of anything and do evil in the sight of the Lord your God to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not 
prolong your days in it, but will be utterly destroyed. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations, where the Lord draw, will drive you. And there you will serve gods. The work of what? Man's hands, which is associated with self, isn't it? Trusting in the things man's hands does. Wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you what? Seek him with all of your heart and all of your soul. When you are in distress, all these things will come upon you in the latter days. Are we in the latter days? Amen. When you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice. For the Lord your God is merciful God. He will not forsake you nor destroy you nor forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore to them. For ask now concerning the days that are past which were before you since the day that the, the God re created man on the earth and asked from the end of the heaven to the other whether any great thing like this has happened or anything like this has been heard. Did any people ever hear the voice of God speaking out from the midst of fire as you have heard and live? In other words, we have no excuse. Jesus, God Almighty, came into this realm and spoke. Amen. So it says here, seek with all of your heart. This is embrace. All of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength. In Deuteronomy 6. In verse 1. Would you speak it with me? Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may what? Fear the Lord. That's reverence, honor, and respect. That you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with what? All of your strength. You shall teach, and these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses of all good things which you did not fill, hooned out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall fill the Lord your God and serve him and shall take oaths in his name. You shall not go after other gods and the gods of the peoples who are all around you. For the Lord your God is jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord your God be aroused against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, and that you may go in and possess the good land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. To do what? Cast out or what? Drive out. It's amazing that believers stop driving out the enemy. And they allow the enemy to drive God out. 
Cast out, drive out your enemies from before you as the Lord has spoken. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Established heart always wants to drive out the enemy. That's why it's a military operation. That's why we're doing training sessions. This is not some religious foo-foo. We get enough of that on television. Yes, God is great. God is good. All things can work to the good to those who love him. But he says, if you love me, you'll obey me. <laughs> Jesus said something powerful. He said, I did not come to bring you peace, but a sword. What's a sword for? Planting? Is it to dig out little holes and plant little plants? No. It's to cut off the heads of serpents. It's to drive out your enemy. Amen? Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 6. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Leaven means evil. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Therefore, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with what? Old leaven, nor with leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexual immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with sexual immoral people of this world. He was talking about believers that are backslidden. Or with covetous or extortioners or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I have written to you not to keep company with any one named a what? Brother or a Christian who is sexually immoral or covetous or idolater, or reviler, or drunkard, or an extortioner. Don't even eat with such a person. For what do I have to do with judging those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. So who judges the ones inside? We do. And how do we judge them? By their fruit. So people go, don't judge me. You bet your sweet baby I'm going to judge you. I'm going to judge your fruit. Because if you're bearing stinky fruit, I don't want to be near you. And the Lord says, expose it, I will. But he always does it anyway, so. <laughs> oh, glory. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Are you ready? Where'd I go? Which verse? Verse 12. No, 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 no. 13? No, they're not. No, no. And ver wait a minute. Oh, that's right. I'm in the wrong chapter. Sorry. Okay. Is everybody cool? In verse 13, but those who are outside of God judges, therefore put away from you yourselves the what? Evil. evil person. They're called evil persons. Evil means wicked. Everyone say wicked. wicked. A little leaven, that's evil. How many of y'all know a little leaven will compromise? Why? That's that influence. Remember, the enemy is trying to influence us in any way so whatsoever to begin to drive out God's presence and put it in his presence so that we're no longer yielding to the spirit of God. We're relying on ourselves. So it's no longer the power of God that's flowing through. It's the power of self. Amen? Amen. Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to share this. This is powerful. Um, and, and one of these things, you know, it brings disconnect, doesn't it? Amen? Christians... There's a new game out. It's called Christian Monopoly. 
They roll the dice and play, live by chance. They pass go. Does everybody understand? Everybody, they're playing the game. <laughs> to them, it's a game. It's called Christian Monopoly. <laughs> they're rolling dice by chance. They're hoping that no connection at all. Disconnect. The heart is heart of stone. No longer heart yielded to the spirit. Is everybody okay? It's called Christian Monopoly. I hope somebody doesn't come up with this thing and start making it, you know. But people are actually playing the game. Throwing the dice and chance. People are taking chances and touching unclean things. They're taking chances with sin. They're taking chances. And not knowing that they're defiling themselves. In Psalm 15. Listening to music they shouldn't be listening to. Watching TV they shouldn't be. Movies and things and touching unclean things and from the influence. Remember that little leaven is in a little bit of compromise. It, it broke the connection, the three covenant connections. But people don't take it serious. Because they're just rolling the dice, playing the game. Hopefully they're not still playing the game while they're still, they give up their last breath. Because they're going to take it very serious, but it'll be too late. Psalm 15. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. Lord, who may abide in your what? Tabernacle. And who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks what? Uprightly. That means right standing with God. Who works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. In other words, his heart is established. He can't be bought by money. He can't be influenced by lust. He can't be influenced by uh, uh, things of false pleasures. He can't be influenced by anything unclean. No, heart is connected. Why? Because he's maintaining that connection by the three covenants, the three uh, promises in that arena. What is it? God says, look it, if you'll do this, I'll do that. The three abidings, the three arenas that you will seek him with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your strength. That you'll abide in his word, in prayer, and in presence. Any one of those is broke, there's a, a, a disconnect. The, the, the cycle starts until eventually they're all cut. And that person has drifted away. Everything starts with a simple compromise. A simple agreement. That's all it takes. A simple agreement. Matthew 21. Yeah, I, I, and don't get me wrong, if you don't want to, uh, there are people that just don't want to serve God. Amen. And if they don't want to serve God, they're going to be unclean and, and, and hope that they're going to cry out to God on the day that they're getting ready to give up their last breath. Well, many of them get saved on the, on the hospital bed or their dying bed. Everyone is called to serve God. Everyone. The invitation is sent out. Amen? In Matthew 21, verse 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of God, and what did he do? He did what? He drove out. See, if you're not one that's driving out, then you're getting driven in. He drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be a house of what? Prayer. Prayer. A house of what? Prayer. prayer. Go ahead, keep compromising in prayer. 
You'll become the house of dead, a cursed house, a house of thieves, a house of unclean spirits. But you have made it a what? Den of what? Thieves. Amen? And that's what he's talking about. We're to be driving out unclean spirits, false doctrines, demons, accursed items. To what? Establish a steadfast heart of God. One of the things is by, without reestablishing spiritual warfare, you're not driving out nothing. If you're going to God and going, oh Lord, this is what I need today. I just thank you. I just thank you so much for everything. That's wonderful. But if what you're trying to do is bribe them, You can't bribe God. He knows the intents and the manipulations of the heart and the motives. He knows. Gosh, Lord, why haven't you given me this? Because you ain't going to use it right anyways. You ask for my will, and I'm doing it. How many of you know God answers no? When he doesn't answer, it's usually no. Or it means not now. Show me. Show me. You wouldn't give your keys to somebody who don't drive. <laughs> hey, oh, man, can I take your keys? Sure, man, here, just go ahead and take the car. Do whatever you want. You'd have to be plumb dumb. Everything is earned. Amen. Amen? That's why we go through challenges. That's why we go to testing. He isn't going to give you something. There are multiple tests he brings us through before he releases something. If you fail them, you don't get it. 2 Corinthians 6. Is everybody okay? Amen. Praise be to God. Again, we're to drive out unclean spirits, false doctrines, demons, accursed items. We're to drive out the forces of evil, deception, and compromise. What do they do? Let me share with you one of the things that they do. By allowing that, to, well, allowing them to infiltrate, it compromises the divine nature. The divine nature is no longer. In other words, we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to be in control. We are. We just don't, move over. I got this. And he says, no problem. Until we hit the wall of reality. Oh, God. I can't believe I did that. I can. I've been trying to tell you, you just wouldn't stink and listen. If you would just embrace me, I free you. But you're too prideful and arrogant. Verse 11. Oh, Corinthians. Is everybody there? We have not spoken openly to you, our heart is wide open. You are not what? Restricted. Speak it with me. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your affections or desires. Now in return of this, for the same speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness and what communion is light with darkness and what accord is Christ with Belial and what part has a believer with an unbeliever and what agreement has the temple of God with idols or unclean things? For you are the temple of the living God as God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be your God and you'll be my people if you do this. What? If you'll come out from among them and do what? Be separate, sanctified, and don't what? Touch anything unclean with thought or hand or eyes or ears or heart. Don't compromise. <clears throat> Why? Then I'm, you're going to be, you'll have a relationship. I'll be a father, you'll be my son. You'll be my daughter. Don't agree with these things. Anything unclean is rebellion, it's witchcraft. It practices, it's a practice of wickedness. And it is a false witness. You can't touch one thing. Can you imagine if Moses showed up with a cigar and a bottle of wine? Yo! You think anybody's going to believe he saw a flaming fire? 
Yeah, bro, your eyes be red. You saw some, but that wasn't that. When Moses left that presence, he changed. He became holy. He became righteous. He became convicted. He became a new person. And he maintained that. Did he make mistakes? Yep. But he was a heart after God. His heart was established. King David made a lot of mistakes. But many people died around King David because of his mistakes. By the judgment of God. King David saw people die all around him because of his decisions. But he always would run to the ark in the presence of God. In fact, he was given a choice. He said, man, I'd rather fall in the hands of God of judgment than any man. Because he knew the devil would use men. Is everybody okay? Psalm 50, verse 16. Psalm 50, verse 16. What does it say? But to the wicked, God says what? What right have you to declare my statutes? Man, you're holding unclean things in one hand and trying to talk about Jesus? Forget it. That's false witness. To what? To the wicked, God says, what right do you have to declare my statutes, to take my covenant in your mouth, seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you? When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have been a partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother and slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you. But I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. That is powerful. Very powerful. In Acts 17, verse 29. Hallelujah. Acts 17, verse 29. Is everybody okay? Amen. Let's speak it together. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shape, sh shape, shaped by art and man's devising. Truly these times of ignorance. Times of what? Ignorance. ignorance. Hmm. Times of ignorance. Yeah. Uh, God has what? Overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to depart means repent. Depart. Depart. Repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. So what's he saying? It's time. It's, uh, ignorance is no excuse. Amen. Amen. Ignorance is no excuse. Remember, we're to pursue the king, the first thing, and to pursue our enemy. To pursue the king and pursue the enemy in everything we do. You know, God has given us weapons, amen? We're to drive out our enemy before us by spiritual warfare. That's why we're to be first strikers. But if you're not taking prayer, and if you're not taking serious prayer, that's why it says be serious and be watchful in prayer. You'll be overtaken. Jesus warned him. He said, look at it. Uh, you need to pray or, or temptation is going to overtake you. God has given us three major weapons, his name, his word, and his blood. To activate. Ignorance is immaturity. You know, people can go right back. People are still playing games. Whew. Yes. Christian monopoly. Chance. A life of chance. Not truth. 
And believe me, chance won't hold up. Amen? Amen. James chapter 1. We don't want to defile this heart. We don't want to get disconnected. We want an established heart that is immovable. Because there's a price to pay without it. In verse 21, James 1, 21. Let's speak it together, please. Is everybody there? Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks in the perfect law of liberty con and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hero, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If any of you among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to what? Here's the kicker, to keep oneself unspotted from the world. That's the kicker. So everybody got it? And Matthew 15, and then one more scripture. Oh, it's good to hear the pages on a Tuesday night. Flipping like crazy. <laughs> Verse 7, let's speak it. Hypocrites! <laughs> That's what it says, doesn't it? <laughs> Hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth, but honor me, and honor me with their lips. Oh, they got a lot to say. But their heart is far from me. There's a disconnect, isn't there? And in vain they worship me. Why? Because you can't worship him while you're still touching unclean things. You can do all you want, but until you're willing to let go, There'll be a constant disconnect. In vain they worship me, teaching as the doctrines and the commandments of men. It's okay. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth defiles this man. Then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard the saying? But he answered and said, e Every plant which my father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. So we know that one of the fruits of that, defilement, is bringing blindness. Defile the heart, compromise. Amen? The divine, what's the compromise? The divine nature. There's a disconnect of true reality. Now there's a false reality. How many of y'all know that when we were out there using and drugging, we were, I'm, I, yeah, I'm just, just this one more time. I'll be okay. Just one, 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 more, one more time. I'll be okay. No, no, one more time. I'll, I'll be okay. I promise. I promise one more time I'll be okay. I wasn't okay. I wasn't okay at all. I had to get to prison to be okay. And I wasn't okay in there. It wasn't until I stayed in God's presence that I changed. But I embraced his presence. We embrace his presence. Why? When we worship and we worship him with all of our heart and mind and strength and purity. But you can't go before him. Look at it. You're not going to show up in God's presence with a cigar and a bottle of wine. Hi. Shaking. You'd be tempting him. Provoke. Someone's like saying, What you gonna do? He's saying, You don't know when I'm gonna. 
but it will come when you least expect it. Psalm 16. We'll close here. See, that's what the enemy does here. Man, I, I must be all right. Yeah. Ain't nothing happened yet. <laughs> I know somebody that, I know many people it's happened to. Nothing happened yet, standing on a corner. Nothing happened yet. Car went out of control, hit that person and killed them. Person, two people riding their bicycles got hit and killed. Nothing happened yet. You never know. That's a terrible life to live. That's a terrible way to live, wondering. When I was in the world, that's how I lived. I didn't know if that last hit or last whatever I was doing was my last. Could have been my last. Could have been my last drink. Could have been my last... Last of everything. Didn't know. Never knew when it was going to be last. But I knew there was something. His name was Holy Spirit who didn't stop slapping me in the head. Yo, dumb, dumb. That's why they call it dope, right? You know, stupid. What are you touching unclean things for? Have you forgotten what God has done for you? Amen. Psalm 16, let's speak it. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. My soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. For as for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. <clears throat> o Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in the pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. See, when there's disconnect, he ain't before you, man. Because he is at my right hand, I will what? Not be moved. My heart is established because he's before me. I'm connected. Therefore, my heart is what? Glad, rejoices. You know you're walking upright with God. But it's terrible when you know you're not at right standing with God. It's a terrible place to be terrible you can justify all you want but the conviction never stops Amen. you keep rejecting it the heart gets harder eventually you're going to step on something that's going to break Amen. therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices my flesh will also rest in hope for you will not leave my soul in hell nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory. What a promise, man. Awesome. What an awesome dad we serve. What an awesome God we love. Why would we allow anything to disconnect us from eternity? Home. His presence, his love. Why would we allow anything to happen? We should hate evil so much that the first thing after we seek the king, we pursue our enemy. We drive him out of our homes, but first you got to drive him out of here. And then you get to your workplace and you begin to drive it out. You don't compromise with them and laugh with them with their dirty jokes and all the other garbage. I would rather be fired. I could care less about the stinking money Amen. than compromise and cooperate with their evilness. Amen. You don't think God takes record of all that? Sure does. He takes record of all of that. 
He allows certain things for us to be positioned so we can be tested. Amen. Trust is earned and freedom is learned. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for your counsel, correction, and direction. Lord, we commit to you our hearts tonight. We ask, Lord, because you said that if your heart's not pure and your hands aren't clean, you can't abide in me. So, Lord, we ask that you remove anything from us that is defiling and displeasing to you and bring your light and truth in every area of our life, establishing a pure heart, clean hands, a steadfast heart that will not be moved nor be bribed, nor be compromised, nor be bought. But Lord, we commit to you our heart in exchange for your heart. Please protect it with the blood of Jesus and keep us filled with your spirit that we may move in the power of Christ and not the power of ourselves, so that we may be a true witness, not a false one, and be a sign and wonder to this world of who you are and how great you are in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Let's give God all the glory tonight.